This howl is heard by humankind after nearly 10,000 years. Romulus and Remus, the two pups in the video, have been brought to life after thousands of years. These are dire wolf pups, as claimed by Colossal, a biotech company which seeks to reverse extinction. But how did Colossal manage to resurrect an extinct species after more than 10,000 years? And are they really dire wolves, as Colossal claims? And finally, the perennial question that underlies most human inventions, is this even ethical? Now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. Coming back to the question of dire wolves, what are dire wolves? Dire wolves or Anosian dirus were an extinct species of wolves that were endemic to the Americas, primarily North America, from the late Pleistocene and early Holocene epochs, that is roughly from 125,000 to 10,000 years ago. This apex predator was more dense with greater muscle mass and a bulkier build than other Pleistocene era canids. However, Dire wolves have a lineage of their own and are distinct from grey wolves. The last direct ancestral link of the grey wolf to the dire wolf was 6 million years ago. So how did this long extinct animal get a second chance at life? Enter Colossal, a biotech company based in Dallas, Texas in the United States, on October 1st, 2024 successfully brought back to life a once eradicated species through the science of de-extinction. But how did they manage to do it? Colossal says that there are eight steps towards the process of de-extinction. Step one is the collection and isolation of DNA samples by using a single dire wolf tooth and a 72,000 year old skull. This is then followed by step two, which is the generation of whole genome sequences from the two samples. A genome sequence is the complete order of DNA letters, A, T, C, and G, that make up an organism's genetic instructions for how it grows, functions, and survives. Then follows step three, mapping of the genome sequences with the dire wolf's closest living relative, the gray wolf. Then a simple blood withdrawal from the gray wolf is followed by an isolation and cloning of specific cells which in the next step, that is step five, is aligned with the grey wolf's genome to that of the dire wolf and the differences are noted. Step six filters out the differences. And then step seven, genome engineering is utilized to change a part of the grey wolf's genome. This involves cutting out the DNA bit that looks like the grey wolf and replacing it with the dire wolf DNA. The last and the final step, that is step eight, involves sticking the dire wolf cell in the egg of a wolf after removing the latter's DNA. That cell becomes an embryo and that embryo is a dire wolf. Although all these steps have successfully worked out, but questions are however being raised on the authenticity of the supposed dire wolves. An article in the weekly Science and Technology magazine, New Scientist, disparages it as a mere resemblance. Beth Shapiro, an evolutionary biologist and chief science officer at Colossal, told the magazine that grey wolves and dire wolves share 99.5% of their DNA. And since the grey wolf genome is around 2.4 billion base pairs long, that still leaves room for millions of base pairs of differences. In an essay published by the Cambridge University Press titled Philosophy and Ethics of De-Extinction, the author J. Odenbach details both sides of the argument. The first argument in favour of de-extinction comes from the lens of justice. He writes, when a moral agent harms a moral subject, the former owes the latter restitution. And then he uses the example of woolly mammoths. The view against this argument states that we do not owe extinct species restitution since we did not drive them extinct. However, moving forward in this essay, a serious argument against de-extinction comes from the point of view of animal welfare. De-extinction will cause unnecessary suffering 
Therefore, it is morally wrong to recreate and resurrect species. The author uses the example of the Bucardo or the Pyrenean Ibex, cloned and born in 2003, but due to its deformed lungs, it lived for a brief time in tremendous pain. The case of the dire wolf pups is in contrast to that of the Bucardo. They are healthy and under constant supervision in an 800 hectare undisclosed reserve. The future appears bright for them and Colossus has achieved a significant feat. But can the same success be replicated for the company with regards to their projects related to the woolly mammoth, the dodo and the Tasmanian tiger? Only time will tell.